All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the honorable military commander from the Shinsengumi, Toshizo Hijikata. Starting off in Hino, Japan, Hijikata was born the youngest out of 10 children. His father, who was said to be a farmer of good wealth, passed away a few months before Hijikata even made it into the world. To make things worse, Hijikata's mother also took an early leave due to contracting tuberculosis by the time he was six. So as you can see, despite coming from a prosperous family, life did not waste any time hitting Hijikata where it hurts. With no one else around to do the job, it was up to his older siblings to raise him into adulthood. This led him to becoming the spoiled child of the bunch. When it came to dealing with friends and family, everything was all good. But if it was anybody outside of that, you were most certain to get the cold shoulder. And although I'm sure he only acted this way due to losing his parents, he continued to behave in this manner until he had his first epiphany. This took place at the funeral of a young swordsman, which was said to have affected him dearly as he himself wanted nothing more than to become a samurai. From that point on, he decided to put most of these bad habits to the side and focus that energy on something more meaningful. Kuroku, who was Hijikata's older brother, was the one that gained the family's assets. As such, he was the one that sheltered Hijikata for a good portion of his life. Years came to pass and eventually Kuroku was able to get Hijikata his first job at a fabric shop. To his surprise, however, this job didn't last that long. Sometime after he started, Hijikata had a dispute with one of his co-workers and ended up leaving the job because of it. This left Kuroku disappointed. He had jumped through a lot of hurdles to acquire that job and the way he saw it, Hijikata just threw it away. As a result, Hijikata was not allowed back into his household and was forced to go live with his sister Nobusato instead. This must have been fate because it only brought him closer to his main goal. So Nobu's husband, or namely Hikogoro, was the owner of a Kinjutsu dojo. It was a dojo that he maintained that had been around for a couple of generations. Here, he allowed people to teach the Tenen Rishin Ryu style so farmers could protect themselves from the lawbreakers that were running around at the time. And one of these instructors, was Kondo Isami, an experienced master of the style, but more importantly, a man who would become great friends with Hijikata in the near future. From this point, Hijikata goes on to practice his sword skills, and before long, Hikigoro was able to score yet another job for Hijikata at one of the shops downtown. Again, this didn't last too long. With Hijikata being well known for his looks, he ended up getting sidetracked and instead of doing his job this dude got fired because he was out here messing around with them hoes now just like hijikata's brother hikigoro was pissed but unlike his brother he did not give up on him he said okay obviously you suck at working in stores so here's what we're gonna do and this is when he pitched the idea of a different line of work now, since Hikigoro was actually a doctor, he told Hijikata that maybe he should try to go around town and sell their family's medicinal products. That way, he could help the family out and receive a portion of that money at the same time. Not only did this work out for him, but it also allowed him to visit multiple dojos and practice his kenjutsu in his spare time. And by mixing the arts from all these different locations, he ended up becoming very proficient with his blade. Sometime after this, Hijikata and Kondo decide to enter a group known as the Roshigumi. And to give some background as to why this group even exists, we have to cover the bigger issues at hand. After the uprisings that took place in the lore of Shiro Kodami, Japan put down a 200 year ban on all interaction with foreign territories. We don't want none of y'all in here. Y'all done came in here with this Christianity and fucked up the whole shit. 
Now we got to start over from scratch and get our country back where it's supposed to be. And this ban only excluded a few minor places. Fast forward past these 200 years and the US had realized how advantageous it would be if they had access to the ports in Japan. So US Captain Matt Perry goes over to Japan and said, hey, I know it's been 200 years and all, but I'm gonna need y'all to open up these ports. And if we don't, yeah, we kind of figured that you might say that. And that's why we brought these warships. Look fam, just sign the treaty, cause you really don't want to go there with us. The Japanese knew they were no match for the US, so they agreed to this treaty and opened up the ports accordingly. Now, although opening the ports back up did cause the economy to flourish, it also tipped the scales of the social order. Now, the merchants who were formerly at the bottom of society were the ones eating, and the samurai at the top were starting to decline. If you were a samurai working for a warlord, you lost a lot of your assets, but you still remained somewhat in good hands. And people who didn't feel like they were in good hands ended up looking for new sources of income entirely. If you didn't have a master, you were screwed. You were basically unemployed, in poverty, and hoping that someone would swoop in and offer you some work. But with the 200 years of peace in Japan, you couldn't get any work. Samurai weren't really as necessary as they used to be, so nobody was hiring. And due to these circumstances, a lot of these ronin who couldn't get income became gamblers, bandits, or mercenaries in order to survive. This is what brings us the Roshi Gumi. It was a group that was created to keep these guys under control. But for the most part, it was a group of warriors that would have their livelihood threatened if the shogunate were to take a fall. So with all of that in mind, Hijikata had to join the Roshigumi. And on top of the discontent of the Ronin, the emperor also had a problem with the current system. At the time, the title of being an emperor was just a placeholder. He had no actual power unless it went through the hands of the shogunate. However, the more the shogunate began to crumble, the more the emperor began to gain back his influence. He then issued the Expel All Barbarians Edict, which basically meant get these foreigners back out our country and return political authority to me. Now, of course, the shogunate had no intentions on enforcing this law, but what this did do was inspire the Ronin to fight the shogunate back. So after joining the Roshigumi, Hijikata and Kondo get all the way down to Kyoto just to find out that the guy that was supposed to be their leader was actually a fraud. Turns out this man had no intentions on protecting the shogun. He was actually making an attempt to round people up for the anti-shogunate instead. When the so-called leader tried to make everyone go back to Edo for their first mission, several of these members, including Kondo and Hijikata, stayed behind and said, nah, we're gonna stay here and protect the Shogun like we first intended. The same group that stayed behind later became a special police force known as the Shinsengumi. And Katamori Matsudara was the warlord who was tasked with being the overseer for this group. So looking at the way that things turned out, Katamori decided to change the main objective for this group from protecting the Shogun to keeping peace throughout the streets of Kyoto. He then appointed three commanders, Kondo, Serizawa, and Nishiki. Now, although the whole point of this group was to keep peace and make sure everybody else was all right, there was a lot of inner turmoil in the organization before they even got started. For starters, Kondo was not a fan of the other two commanders. And personally, I can't say I blame him. These guys were out here doing the most, extorting money from local merchants, getting into drunken brawls, 
and completely ruining public businesses in broad daylight. Who are you gonna call? The police? We are the police. So yeah, you can see how this quickly became a problem. Eventually, Nishiki ended up getting demoted and he was forced to commit seppuku by Hijikata for breaking the Shinsengumi code. Realizing that Serizawa was also ruining the group's image, Katamori issued an order for several members, including Hijikata, Okita, and Kondo, to assassinate Serizawa for his insubordination. And it turned out to be a success. Now that the dead weight was out the way, Kondo and Hijikata became the new and improved leaders of the Shinsengumi. Hijikata himself was known to be very strict when it came to following the Shinsengumi code. Anyone who went outside of these laws would be dealt with immediately. Many people who were in this group started to realize that they weren't up to par and they tried to leave. But one of the laws of the Shinsengumi is that you can't leave. There's only one way in and there's only one way out. And that way out is not through the door. If you ever tried to opt out, you would be forced to take your own life. This is due to them standing by a code of honor very similar to that of a samurai. The group then finds out that one of the Ronin alliances were planning to burn down Kyoto and kidnap the emperor that same night. In response to this revelation, Katamori sent out the Shinsengumi and ordered them to deal with the Ikidaya affair, which was a two hour battle against these rebels that resulted in a handful being killed and several being arrested. A couple of years down the road and the unrest of the anti-shogunate grew into an all out war. This was the Boshin War, the final stretch between the rebels and the people who supported the shogunate. And of course, the Shinsengumi were in on this as well. The two sides had some back and forth, but despite the Shinsengumi's attempt to hold their own, the war was leaning mostly in favor of the rebels. A couple of weeks later, misery struck again when Hijikata's friend Kondo was captured and executed by enemy forces. And to top it all off, Okita had also passed away as a result of her frail health. Hijikata knew that his time was wearing thin, but at the same time, he wasn't about to let his comrades lose their lives in vain. After multiple clashes, he faced his final struggle at the Battle of Hakodate. Here, Hijikata was said to have been guarding the fort of Goryokaku when he realized that some of the Shinsengumi troops were in need of assistance at another fort. Refusing to leave his people behind, he quickly tried to make his way over to the fort and save them from the enemy troops. It was at that moment that Hijikata was intercepted by these troops and shot from atop of his horse. The bullet was said to have shattered his lower back, taking his life and effectively putting an end to the Shinsengumi for good. Before he passed away, he stated that he knew he was fighting a losing battle, but it would be a shame to dip out on the shogunate when their back was against the wall. To the end, he stood up for what he believed in and was more than willing to lose his life because of it. That about wraps it up. If you enjoyed the video, please like it up so we can get this trending. Feel free to add information as you see fit and let me know what you guys think about it. It's your boy, Saya. I'm out.